Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Tuesday, June 6, 2017. I want to catch you up on progress on the iron battery. So I was set out today to make a stack of iron cells to increase the total voltage. Let's talk about how that's going to work. So as I talked about yesterday, the goal is to make a battery so cheap that it can make renewable energy storable cost effectively when renewable energy is available so that renewable energy can be more than just a fossil fuel saving device. It can actually take over from the non-renewable sources of energy. To do that, we need a battery that's really, really cheap. And that means the components need to be really cheap. And the good news is that the battery I've been talking about, this iron, iron EDTA battery, is made of really, really cheap components. And it works measurably. So we need to make it better. And one of the ways to make it better is to make the voltage higher. The easiest or simplest way to make the voltage higher is to have batteries in series, just like you put your double A's with a 1.5 volt battery right next to another 1.5 battery, you get three volts. We could do that with our iron cell by stacking them. So we make an iron separator EDTA cell, put a conductor, and then add another iron separator iron EDTA cell that attaches directly. So essentially this is a stack of the same cells we've been talking about, but built into one device. And the way I thought to do that was essentially make washers and fill them with the components. So a little hollow circle, fill it with iron, fill another one with the separator, fill another one with the iron EDTA with some graphite for conductivity, and then put aluminum between them so that they are connected and then stack another one right on top of that. So I don't have a big collection of washers handy. So I just cut some with my laser cutter and then arrayed them out like I was talking about. So there's aluminum on the backside of the first washer, and then I put down another washer, add the iron, add the separator, add the electrolyte, and then pack in the uh, graphite iron EDTA into the next layer, connect them all up. I got three cells in series that way, and I gave zero volts, which was very frustrating. Carefully, I found that the first cell was working. I got 0.2 volts off of that. And then after I connected my voltmeter to the second cell, I got 0.4 volts, so it's working. But unfortunately, the, the, full, the third cell didn't work and the full array is dead. So this just isn't a super effective way to assemble these batteries. It's ultimately not the best results, but I'm hopeful that on the next iteration, we can improve the overall uh, usability of the design and make it a little easier to assemble too definitely make it bigger because bigger is easier to handle. And I think I will use the design suggested by a commenter. Thank you very much for that, where I will align the cells horizontally instead of vertically. That will make things maybe a little trickier to assemble, but less prone to leakage and such problems. So stay tuned. We will talk more about that as soon as I can make some time in the lab to make it happen. In the meantime, we'll talk more about science and chemistry great things happening in the world here in the Allen Lab.